Welcome to The Chris Duncan Show. You ask questions and I answer them. Everything, super conscious, magnetic mind, transformation, creating a life you love and success. You've got questions and I've got answers. Hello everyone, uh, excited to be here. Uh, great to see so many of you on here live, so hello. Uh, it is, uh, it's just wonderful that you decided to spend some time um, with me here live. So thank you if you are here live and to all of those of you that are listening on the recording, uh, thanks. Thanks for spending some time in the super conscious field uh, with me. Wherever you are and whatever time you're watching this, you might be on YouTube or Spotify or iTunes or wherever uh, wherever is good. So welcome to the fifth episode of the Chris Duncan Show, uh, which is a show dedicated to you and your questions. Uh, it is so... Uh, I'm just so grateful to, to see so many people want to live a powerful life and to, to, to step into their powerful orientation and, and claim that truth, that part of them that's not broken. Uh, very excited to say my book's coming out soon. You're not broken. And uh, I just, uh, I have the, the um, what's it called? The, the printout of the book cover here. So it's out in three weeks, five steps to become super conscious and activate your magic, which is going to transform the personal development industry as people truly realize that the idea of fixing themselves is, uh, is not valid. So welcome. So just to set the, the, the precedent for the call, this is a Q&A call. The questions have already been sent in from... Uh, uh, attendees or students in my Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a 12-month coaching program. If you would like uh, more information on that program or to be involved with it or to just talk to someone on my team, uh, there is a link here that you can click and, and find out more. Uh, Magnetic Mind, we have up to six sessions every week. We do coaching, recode, uh, once a quarter, we do a big uh, three-day event and it's a brilliant tribe of conscious creators learning how to create from the aspect of themselves that, that uh, is innate in all of us, but we haven't had a working relationship with. Uh, we like to call it your super conscious, but you can call whatever you like and it does not get offended, whatever name. You can call it Bob if that's uh, how you would like to relate to the super conscious, but it's the, it's the part of you that holds all the information and allows you to recode and change information and it's been a, it's been an absolutely wonderful nearly three years uh, since I released that program just watching people truly get it and uh, and step into their powerful orientation and shift uh, amazing things in their life so so very very grateful to be here and sharing this all with you so if you'd like to be part of that group do reach out we have a, a certification for those who want to become um, a professional in this work and we also have a uh, other smaller courses and things as well so there's a link for you to get more information uh, if you want more information on what we do, you can you can simply put your details in there and someone will call you. So today we've got some great questions um, that are sent in. And uh, I think we're going to have a, a great dialogue and a great conversation. So uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, we I think we did our last one only two weeks ago. And the, the caliber of the questions is always great. And I love people who are learning to orientate to a more powerful um, perspective. And, and, and that's what it's all about. You know, you're not broken. You can create whatever it is that you, you'd like, just the way you are, just the way you're created. There, there's nothing you need to fix about you. Yet, you, you do need to learn how to use all of you. You see, you're not broken. You just need to learn how to use this, this part of you that you may not have had a working relationship with called your super conscious, which is, which is something that's connected through your family line, through all of humanity to the field of all information and all things. And when you realize the field is all that we are and the field is all that's there and that we are a creative energy having a human experience and that every great um, teacher, uh, religion, every great mystic, every, uh, all spiritual teaching. There's a there's a common theme, and that common theme, if you look through all of them, is to know yourself, know yourself as as the true as your truth. Is, isn't it true to know yourself? Whatever you look says, know who you are, not know what you really are. 
And uh, most, uh, most teachers or great teachers have had a very mystical experience or a very divine experience. And they've tried to explain that divine or mystical experience, but they all say the same thing is that I'm not different to you. You must just learn how to orient from this way. You must learn how to be there. And so we're so blessed to see people in our work, you know, uh, regain their eyesight and to no longer need diabetic medication and to, to change all sorts of things. And I, and, I, and I want them all to know it's them and it is. It's when they connect to their uh, powerful presence, that's, that's when the change happens. And learning to live from that place is the biggest gift. It's the biggest gift you can have, and uh, you're not broken. There's a lot of uh, misguided information out there, and, and most of this misguided information uh, looks to put the power outside of you, looks to give the power away, doesn't it? Now, those who are here live, does, doesn't it try to give the power away to some medication or to a guru or to an to a education or a society or to something else? Tries to give the power away, says we're, we're powerless. And it's a very, uh, it's a very big thing, uh, giving this power away, saying I'm not powerful, but that is. The, the other way that we give our power away is, is instead of creating, we problem solve. And what that means is we, we look and we actually define what's wrong first. We say, this is what's wrong. Now, the, the challenge that we have is, is when you define the problem, you create it. Because you are the creative energy, so you define the problem. As soon as you define and observe the problem, well, then it's, a, it's, it's real. Yet creators just create what they love without needing to react. Uh, so it's a, it's a big thing. Let me get into the questions because uh, that is the, the premise uh, of the show. So the first question I have is from Haiti, uh, which is a great, great question. Here it is. I'm going to type it in for those that are here with me live, uh, and then I will read it out as well. So you guys should be able to, are well, the questions too large to type in? It is a large question. Yeah, I'll do that. There's the first part of it. And here's the next part of it. And here is the last part of it, okay. So the, the question starts off saying, hey, Chris, I've been doing magnetic mind for work uh, for, a, for a year now, and I completed my certification exam and love the way you work, the way you teach. So thanks, Haiti. You say, I still struggle in the space of you don't need fixing. I struggle to understand and explain this because we say you don't need fixing, but then talk how epigenetics and we're basically functioning off a blueprint taken on unconsciously while our brain's in the theta hypno state before the age seven. We tell our clients that we took on beliefs about ourselves, others in the world during this life, pre-birth or preconception that separated us from our true nature and purpose. And while these beliefs may have served us to keep us safe once, they simply no longer do. They only now throw up resistance to us reaching our true choices for achieving a true choice that part of our old identity effectively has to die and fights to maintain the status quo. So this is all correct. We, we then say, let's try and recode uh, that. I think it's wonderful, but I cannot seem to see any difference to family constellation workshops or NLP, uh, trying to remove the same limiting beliefs of their own techniques. Perfect. Can you help me understand how we more people remove resistance and merge unhelpful parts of our main personality so we can flow effortlessly towards that desired end result of not fixing? Note, I don't think there's anything wrong with fixing personally. I'm just trying to differentiate between this and what other modalities are doing. Thanks, Haiti. It's, it's a great question. So if I was to summarize it, uh, Haiti's saying, well, hey, you know, well, I, I'm not sure how to explain the, the idea that we don't need to fix ourselves when we do the recode. And if you haven't done a recode, it's a beautiful experience. Okay, so it's a, it's a good question. It's one that I get a lot, so, so thank you. And it shows you really are wanting to understand this. If I've got a problem in my life, let's say I'm anxious before public speaking. If I go to do something to solve anxiety, I'm problem solving. But if I sit on my couch and I go, I would really love to be confident. 
I would really love to be confident and be a public speaker. Then I've switched to creating something. Problem solving and fixing ourselves does not work because you entangle yourself with the, the identity that says, I have a problem. So it's like you create two uh, drops in the, uh, so it's like you drop two stones into a pond and they both create ripples. You observe the thing that you don't want and then you try to create getting away from it. Now, th this is a, a very typical orientation in life, isn't it? Who's on life? Give me a yes. You, you see something and you go, I, I have this. I prefer not to have this. You know, I have this circumstance or this condition or this, and I prefer not to. The problem is, is you're a creator. And as soon as you've observed it, what you've done is you've made it real. You've made it real. And, and the, the challenge is, is as soon as you observe something that is a problem, for example, uh, anxiety or I don't have enough money or um, uh, you observe that you've got an illness, for, for example, what you do is you then create meaning to that you, and you give the power to that problem. So you say, I don't have enough money or I don't have uh, uh, enough health and that's a problem. So you give it the power. Now, the superconscious has all the all the information it has everything and it is very very powerful so as soon as you're giving something else the power and saying i wish i didn't have that you're saying that has power over me because of that i can't live my life to the fullest you see so you become powerless less powerful than that you become a victim of whatever that circumstance is and, and as soon as you're in that orientation, you then say, well, now I need to fix that thing because that thing is what's in the way of me achieving what I want. So where's the power? The power is given to the thing. So you do hypnotherapy or NLP or, or uh, psychotherapy or uh, EFT tapping or whatever it is, you go do something to try to solve the thing. What happens though, is you do solve it but you create an identity of being powerless. So now you went and solved this thing. So you solve it, great. So you still haven't achieved what you want, but you don't have the thing anymore. So now you've got an identity that says, whenever I wanna go for something, I must become perfect before I go for it. So then you start going for the relationship again and up pops some doubt. Then you have to go fix that. And then you fix that. And then you go, right now, I'll get back to getting the relationship. You go to go for the relationship. Oh, but I need to lose some weight. So you go fix that. So do you see the habit that forms of needing to fix yourself when you're in the problem reality? Does that make sense? It becomes an addiction. It is is when, are you, when are you going to live? Give me a yes, guys, if you're here live or, or whatever, just, just let me know you're getting that. It becomes an addiction. It becomes your identity of keep on trying to become something else in order to achieve. And this is the, the biggest uh, problem in personal development is, is people replace uh, one symptom with another one. They replace one thing with another and they just go round and around. They just keep on searching because their brain has been told whenever there's something uncomfortable, I have to go fix it. And, and, and that's fundamentally the problem reality. And unfortunately, some of the things that you listed like NLP or hypnosis or these things, even though the therapy is good, even though the therapy is good, the person walking in is walking in in the wrong reality focus. They're, they're focused on that they must fix themselves to achieve. And then so the therapy resolves whatever conflict there was. However, a bigger problem emerges. And that bigger problem is an identity of needing to fix themselves. So, so how is that different to, to what we do? Well, 80% well, of what I teach is that structure creates reality. So instead of problem solving, you must acknowledge that there is nothing better than the now. 
And this is called the magnetic moment. So in order to not be in problem solving, the now must be better than any other reality. Now, to most of us, to our self-conscious, it's very difficult to achieve that. So we call this moment the magnetic moment. It's when you open the wizard's gate and claim the moment. Now, many people say, but Chris, I, a future would be better because I've got this diagnosis. I've got this health condition. Chris, a future would be better. I just lost my job. I don't know how I'm going to pay rent. Chris, a future would be better. I'm single and I'm overweight and I don't like that. Chris, a, a future would be better. It would be better. It would be better. It would be better. They tell me, Chris, it's going to be better. Yet they're wrong. They're wrong. They're just wrong. There's nothing better than the moment. There's nothing you cannot achieve right now that any future will help you to achieve unless you be it now. What is it? You become super conscious. Super conscious is access to all information. Super conscious isn't worried about this body vessel and its slight uh, diagnosis or ill health. It's not worried about that you don't have uh, enough money to have a fancy car. It's not worried about the fact that you need to eat at a certain restaurant. It's just not worried about that stuff. See, the superconscious is more concerned in using the moment than it is about achieving anything that our human, our human vessel thinks is important. When you become superconscious, you realize the moment is the biggest gift. You'll never get this moment back. There's nothing, there, there, there's no money that can give you more moments. There, there's no, there, it doesn't matter how healthy or ill healthy you are. If you've got a moment to experience, if you've got this drop in time that you get to experience being a human being, that is the most valuable thing there is. To the superconscious, you have it all now because you have breath in your lungs and you're here to the superconscious that's it so so once you give up the idea that once you have this or if you fix that it will be better and you truly acquiesce to the moment you become a superconductor meaning you you can be conductive you can move with no resistance if you can be completely satisfied and happy with everything you have now and there'll be nothing more that could give you more than what you have. You become it. You, you've, you've become the infinite. And then as soon as you become the infinite, you ask the question, well, what would I love to experience? But not because I would love to experience it because it's better than now, just because it's a different flavor. Just because I'm full from my beautiful uh, roast dinner, doesn't mean that uh, in a few hours, I might like to experience an ice cream or I might like to experience, uh, uh, you know, some chocolate. I might like to experience something else, you see. Just because I'm completely satisfied doesn't deny that I would like to experience and create other things in this flow called time, you see. Just because I'm, I'm completely satisfied doesn't deny that I also choose to experience and create different flavors. So that is the teaching. The teaching is the creative orientation is so satisfied in the now, choosing to create more of what they love. The problem orientation is dissatisfied trying to fix the now try to fix themselves and says, not until I have this, can I be happy without fixing that? I can't succeed without this, without that. That's the problem orientation. So to circle back to the question, the first thing you must do is become it, become super conscious. Because once you're completely happy, now you get it. There's no money that will make you more abundant. If you're a scarce person, you'll be a scarce person with money. You see, there's no relationship that can make you more in love. If you don't love yourself now, how, how can you be in more love? If, no, no one else can do that for you if you can't do it for you. you got, you've got, if you don't appreciate the moment and, and love the moment you have now, a moment that you have in the future that you don't have a diagnosis, you won't enjoy either.
You have one now with some sort of health diagnosis. You have one in the future without that diagnosis. And you'll be just as miserable in each of them because because you haven't realized that the now is the gift. The now is why we're here. We're, We're a creative energy that's fallen from grace into limitation to experience a journey. And that journey is whatever we make it whatever we make it, but the journey is made up of moments of the now. And when you know when you're super conscious, when you truly get it and you're like, nothing's going to be better than this. And I'd still like to create that because I'm a creative energy. So so that's the first part of the answer is that you must become a creator, not a problem solver. The second thing is as you step into your creation, there's going to be aspects of your personality that fight it. But because you've oriented as a creator, not a problem solver, when you do resolve any of those resistances, the body isn't is flowing towards a creation. Therefore, you're not just trying to fix yourself. See, if you say, uh, oh, I create to be, let's use public speaking, I'm creating to be a confident public speaker. And as you go for it, you have all of this this stuff that pops up. And then you shift it. As you shift it, you become the confident speaker. Whereas if you're here and you go, I'm really anxious and I need to fix my anxiety before I can be a public speaker, you just teach your identity that you must fix yourself. You see, that's what happens. So the key difference in our work is that you you create a magnetic mind, not a I need to fix myself mind. And, And we teach people how to create how to step into realities, turn thoughts into things with predictability. And so once you're in the right structure, you can use hypnosis, NLP, EFT, you can. I recodes faster, um, but you can use all of those. So it's such a great question, and I really, really, really appreciate it. And and, and so thanks. So, So there you go. That's the answer. And I'm sticking to it. That's the answer. Um, cool. So I think this next question fits in, fits in well. I didn't get the name of who asked this one, um, but let me type it in anyway. Oh, this one's too long to type in too. Um, let me see if I can halve it. Yep, that worked. All right. Cool. Sorry that I don't have the name for this person, um, but I'm sure you know it's your question. So forgive me for asking such a basic question, but it still eats at me on a regular basis. So I thought I should be crystal clear in my mythology. Specifically speaking, I would like some examples or more details on choosing my end result. All I really honestly want is to achieve a magnetic mind, the state of clarity and purpose, mastery of intuition and maintaining a positive vibration. I'm well on my way and that's not the problem. I just don't require a monetary end result, no new house or career. This is my current focus and I spend every day doing it. Is this short-sighted? Should I have a career or business goal? I do eventually want these things, but for now, I want to focus on myself. So uh, I'll stop the the question there. There's one dysfunction, um, dysfunctional way to create, and it's through limitation. And limitation says, this is all I want for now. I do want those other things in the future, but for now, this is all I want. And so it's it's just not true that you don't want those other things or that there's some sort of um, some sort of order. You do want those other things, so choose them. You know, you 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 say you say here, I do eventually want those things, but for now, I just want to focus on myself. So so this comes in a in in from a perspective of uh, I need to be perfect to have it. Or, or I'm not capable to just, just go for it. So if you do eventually want them, why not put them on your choices? And as soon as you put them on your choices, you'll face yourself. Be like, oh, well, I'd be overwhelmed if I went for those now, or do I really deserve it? 
And that's when you really know what's in the way. Isn't it true? It, 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 in your question, it says, I do eventually want it. So, so if you do, then you do. Let's go for it. When I do choices, uh, I have four core orienting choices. And then I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have eight. I have eight things that, that uh, I'm engaged in. Now, I'm not actively doing stuff on all eight all the time. I'm just actively engaged in them, actively engaged with the end result, meaning some of them, uh, it just means, you know, do nothing, let it flow. Others, it, there's things to do. So, so let me finish off the question. I do eventually want these things, but for now, I want to focus on just myself, the core four. Does this make sense? It makes sense, yeah. Any other suggestions? Can I, should I do both, business and myself? Yes. If I am financially stable and no rush for a better reality, I'm happy now, but no, I could be in a better sense of alignment. Thanks, thanks for your time. And also, all this program is brought to my life. I truly think this work is a game changer. Well, thank you so much. So no, you don't have to do anything. I'm just reading what you've written. What, what I do know is that uh, we're here to create whatever experience we choose to create. Who agrees with that? We're all here. I mean, as the, the we're all here to create what we choose to create. And, and I believe we're here to find meaning, find meaning. And so when someone says to me, well, I don't want to create anything, I always say, well, why not die? And they look at me shocked, like how, how could a coach say that? Well, why not die? If you've done creating, like, what are you here for? And they, they look at me and I'm normally smiling. Well, why not? I mean, what, what are you going to do? They go, you're right. What am I here? What am I going to create? I say, yeah, come on, let's have, let's create. Like, you know, like, what are you here to do then? You know, you're a conscious, you're a consciousness that's decided to be here. And they go, you know what? I'd love to create more time with my grandkids. You know what I'd love to create? I'd love to, you know, I'd just love to walk my dog more. I'd love to create this, or I'd love, I'd love to create a second house. Why not? You know, I'd love to, I'd love to create a charity. You see, it's like, well, come on, what are you here for? Why not go then? Because the truth is, they don't want to go. We don't. We want to. We want to have a human experience. I mean, it, it's, uh, it, it's completely inevitable. It's completely inevitable that that it's we will only we'll, we'll go to a different experience. It's right. We'll go to a different experience after this one. Uh, everyone has different beliefs about what that is. So we'll go to a different experience once we're finished being this identity and this person and this journey. So that's going to happen. So between now and then, what what are you going to create? They're going to create misery, apathy. You're going to create nothing. You're going to sit around. What are you going to create? And it's such a great question, isn't it? Isn't it a great question? Why not just, well, why not die? It really means, well, why live? You're, you're here to live. So what are you going to create? And, and if it's nothing, fair enough. <laughs> if it's nothing, fair enough, but why not go for it? Why not, why not go for it? Right on. What, 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 why live, hey? Why, what are you going to do? Why not? What's the risk? End of the day, there is no risk. Does that make sense to everyone here live? It's like, is this like, what, what, what are we going to create then? You know, so why wait? Why wait? You know, ask yourself that question. You know, what, why live? What am I here to do? What, what would I like to taste or try? You know, it it's really is that we sometimes get so serious as creators. It's just like, what would I like to taste? What would I like to experience? What would I like to have? You know, it's very, it's, it's very true. You just get to choose your experience and, the, and then follow it. You do. And whatever that experience is, you know, if, it, if you're choosing that you'd like to go down a deep spiritual path into um, b b enlightenment, which was your words, then beautiful. Good for you. If you'd like to choose to go surfing each day or, or paint, paint art, great. If you if you want to work a great job and have good friends and, and feel safe and secure, great. There's no there's no right way to do do life. Uh, there are, there's only your way. Yet, as you become a creator, not a problem solver, you, you will choose realities that you'd like to experience, right? You'll choose. You say, I want to experience that one. And you'll, you'll actively entangle your energy with it and then take action towards it until it exists. And then you go, this was a great creation. You know, and, and that's it. You do. You entangle your energy with an end result. 
that is a future probable outcome and you entangle in it and you act towards it and you keep on doing it and then it's there. And I can tell you, I mean, uh, just just the, the beautiful things that you get to create, it's, um, oh, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. It's so good. So create a healthy body. Create a, a, a meaningful life. Create a fun, joyous uh, family. Create love. Create. Create. Because you're not broken. You're not broken. You, you, you just got to use a part of you that, that knows how to create end results. Thanks, John. Appreciate the message. I love it. I love it. All right. Next question. Okay. The question says, uh, I keep finding myself procrastinating. I'm laid off work for six weeks and I thought this would be a great opportunity to really work on my life insurance business. But I find myself cleaning and doing laundry, organizing, reading, learning, anything but actually getting on the phone, calling prospective clients. Why do I urgently feel like I should be doing something else? And how do I get on track? Also, I want to eat healthy and I eat junk it's almost like i'm afraid of change i don't understand why i do what do want i do some days am i the only person who constantly does things against my purpose um so 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 very important if you look at this message it sounds like there's two people Right. Like if you read the message, it's like there's one person who has goals and then there's like it's like there's a whole nother reality happening here where there's uh, something else. And, and it's like uh, this one this one person is attacking the other person. Do you see that? And, and so this is a weird thing. Whenever I hear people say oh, I'm in self-sabotage, I'm like, well, which self is sabotaging the other self and which self is you? <laughs> and so what, what's happening here is that there's two aspects of you that are in conflict and, uh, and they're fighting. And one of them you have amnesia with, right? One of you, hey, Penny, one, one of them you have amnesia with. So one personality wants to start this insurance business and, and eat good food. And then there's this other part of you that's like, I'm happy just the way I am, <laughs> you know, happy. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to not do any of that. And, and so whenever I find someone who is very conflicted like this, we have a, we have a, a nice, a, a really good true choice. And the true choice is I choose a life I love. And so typically the reason why there's so much conflict there is not all parts of your personality are being heard or being experienced or being able to live. So you say there you've been laid off work for six weeks and you, and you thought, you know, this six weeks would be a great time to start this insurance business. It's very likely that there's another part of you that laid off for six weeks wants to go, yes, this is the vacation I've always wanted to look after myself. You see? Yet, you, you're not listening to that part of you. So the first thing is we must create a life where all of you is being heard. So I, I call that a uh, uh, perfect average week. And this is to create a week that you could live again and again and again and again and again. So, so my recommendation would be number one, define your perfect average week. What would you do on the weekends? What would you do in the evenings? How would you do your day? What would your perfect average week be that you could just go again and again and again and again and again? Now, that perfect average week wouldn't be just making phone calls to grow your life insurance business all the time, would it? I would, I would say that that wouldn't be something it's always going to do. It would probably have that in the morning, then this later. And so, so, so that was that'd be my first recommendation. The, the second thing, once you've, you've, you've written out your perfect average week and, and how you would like that to be, I would suggest uh, really, really, really living that and choosing that and see how you go. 
It sounds to me as though you just need to find a way to have a life that fills up your need to uh, eat good food, but then an outlet to eat the other food you like. What, what I get from your question is there's so much denial, you know, like, well, I'm going to go from um, junk food to all healthy, right? Which I don't know. I don't do that. You know, I like eating. I like eating all types of food, but but I, I want to do it in a way that 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 works for me. And it, it's look like you've got you want to go from well, I've had this this job, I got laid off, so now I'm going to just make phone calls, and so you avoid it, and you you know just structure. So this is a, an obvious uh, answer that structure creates uh, action. It's just not structured right. Your life's just not structured right. Now, if you join the masterclass. Uh, in the introduction, the introductory class, I talk about your average week and getting your lenses done, like how to actually plan your year, your quarter, your month and your week so that your life flows. And, and one of the big aspects of that is making sure that all parts of you have an outlet. You know, the part of you that is an achiever, a part of you that... Uh, you know, does like to be lazy and sit in a jacuzzi, the part of you that wants to go out with your friends, a part of you that wants to go to the gym and be healthy, that there's an outlet for all the different variations of you. How's that? Feels like a good answer. Try it on. What do you guys think? Seem, seem pretty, seem like something that I would, I would follow. <laughs> I'm just here just giving answers. I don't know. I'm not saying they're right. <laughs> just answers. Sounds good? Yeah. Someone said, someone said, but I can't fit it all in. So, so, so first I want to just say, hey, I really, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, well, Chris, I can't fit it all in. It's such an interesting way that people orient to being unable to have it, um, what they want. They say, well, I can't fit it all in. Well, obviously. Obviously, you got to sleep and there's so, only so many hours in the day. And, and, and so, so that's not actually the truth. It's not actually the truth that you can't fit it all in. The truth is you just need to get priorities and create a life based around priorities. Or get rid of something. Do, do you see what I'm saying? And, and so, so I won't share your name because I'm being um, a little bit, a little bit straight to the point. But but do you do you see that? There's those so like it's like um I can't fit it all in, you know, I can't, I can't. Okay. And I like you know, there's no, there's no wizardry, is there? Isn't there? There's no wiz wizardry. It's like, well, the truth is, there's things in your life that you're not willing to let go of, isn't it? Where, where is this person? I'm sure you just type. Where, is, is that's the truth, isn't it? It's not that you can't fit anything in. It's that you, you're trying to do. This. There, there is literally so many hours in the day. This is just how it is. But what's more fascinating is whenever I find someone creating a way and an extra way to feel to feel uh uh that they can't have it the way they want it's like we all have the same amount of hours <laughs> you know like it's not a um it, it's not a unique thing and achievers and, and uh, real creators go well these are the priorities this is what i can do does that make sense, guys? Like, and so what's more interesting to me is that that, that was a thing that came out of um, this this really amazing person's. Um, well, they just they typed it in, and you know, I do. You are you are absolutely amazing. What's interesting is I wake up, I can't do it all. It's like, well, there's some obvious things there. Hey, hey, so I care about you. Thanks, thanks for typing in. By the way, never want anyone to feel like I'm. Um, I'm just telling you what I think. Just telling you what I think. And I and I always I always notice, well, we all have the same hours. What I do you know what I love? That's so cool. Uh, I have nearly 60 staff now. And so 60 times um, 40 is uh, 40 hours in a week is 2,400 hours. And I just think it is so cool that 
there's 2,400 hours that amazing human beings uh, are working on the same mission as me. I just think that's so cool. And so there, there's always ways to create more time. I could never do that much in a year. You know, I'm so blessed. <clears throat> so blessed and so, so, so thankful. So thankful to that. All right. Good questions. Good interactions. Uh, I love it. Last question for today. Um, which is which is good. Hi, Chris. I'm hoping to hear your thoughts on this. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> as it's a question I've been contemplating for some time. Uh, <laughs> I love you. Someone's uh, let me just answer this one first. Someone says, what if you have many interests? How do you determine which one you should put more effort into? I don't know. <laughs> Flip a coin. <laughs> you just got to choose, hey? Like, I don't know. Just choose. This is so, you know, many of us are so like, well, how do I do it right? Just choose. Just go for what you love. I mean, once you choose it and go for it, you'll, you'll figure out whether that's something you should continue doing. Isn't that right? Isn't there right? <laughs> and I know, like, I'm, I'm just answering it quite basically, but I think it's basically true, isn't it? I mean, so like, well, I don't know how you will know. You Only you will know, so, so, so choose it. Um, okay, so hey, Chris, hoping to hear your, your um, <laughs> that person said, yeah, thanks, you're right, it is simple. Yeah, there's no, you know, uh, sometimes I see, um, you know, I guess teachers or whatever try to, create something difficult it's like well i don't know you don't know we don't know we're all just here making up being human so go well i probably am going to love this one the most so i'll give it a crack <laughs> and then if i know actually that was all right but i think i might give that one a crack all right <laughs> seems obvious doesn't it one, one thing i i really coach i think the um sequel to the secret should be called the obvious and it's like, it's like, instead of the secret, it's just what's obvious. It's like, well, it's obvious. You can't fit it all in. So you, you have to not do it all. It's obvious, you know, it's obvious here. It's like, well, it's obvious that uh, you can't do all of those things. You're not sure which one to do. So it's obvious you should just try one out. <laughs> so when you see it, uh, it says uh, the sequel to the secret, the obvious, Christopher Duncan, <laughs> don't buy it because <laughs> it will just be like one page it will say just do what's blatantly obvious <laughs> full stop have a great life love chris duncan <laughs> all books donated to a good charity printed on recyclable paper <laughs> all right it'll be one one it'll be one page but there'll be 200 other pages to make it look significant <laughs> Be like notes pages of obvious stuff you think of. <laughs> I'm glad I'm in, uh, I'm at least um, entertaining myself. <laughs> it is just do the obvious. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Man, we can we can make it like a big thing. Be like it's the. It's the biggest thing since the secret. It's the answer you've all waited for. The, you know, the secrets, the obvious. And then it's just empty pages to the middle page. And it says, just do what's blatantly obvious. Dot. <laughs> and then it's just pages. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, Wiz and Val, you're here. Val's on my team. Val, we need a T-shirt. And it just needs to say, do the obvious that's it just do the obvious <laughs> the secret secret the obvious <laughs> people listening to this on the podcast are like oh it was a good podcast we just said and laughed about a very tiny thing for five minutes <laughs> all right back to the question back to the question what was the question that's a good question okay chris i'm hoping to hear your thoughts on this it is a question i've been contemplating for some time if we see something in our mind's eye months prior to the event occurring and it is very accurate to what we envisioned, 
are we creating this event or is this likely a premonition? The topics included are other people, worldly events, weather events. Um, oh, nice, great. So uh, time is a construct of the self-conscious mind. All, all things uh, already exist. There are many probable futures, but only one um, past experience. When you rise up and out into the field, you, you, can, you can gain information on the most probable future. Yet it's not defined because even though it's the most probable, action still needs to be taken for that uh, to occur. So whenever we do uh, one of my courses is the intuition course. Who would like to learn intuition? We, we, teach, uh, we teach intuition at probably the most advanced level on the planet. Well, definitely. And, and, and we, we teach people how to become intuitive. And when we do, uh, is there anyone on here that's in that program? Just type it in me if you are already in the program. Yeah, yeah, so there are some of you on it. But when we teach intuition, what we do is we help people to rise up and out and, and get a symbol and get a reading on, on, on what's, what's likely to happen. And then to get the exact um, action that they must take to ensure that that probability does happen. So, so you probably get lots of premonitions and lots of uh, dreams and good for you for making the connection. What I did to really ensure that my intuition was, was grounded in reality is I would write, write a lot down because if you write down what you're getting and then it happens and you have physical proof of, of having it written, then you know a lot of times uh, we can have a bias. And we, we don't, and I'm not saying this is true for you, but, but many times we can have a bias thinking that um, that this is what we, we saw when it shows up, okay? And so if you are intuitive, it's very good to, to write down, put a date next to it when you, when you had, had it and start to learn what's the difference between when you get uh, information that is true and when you get information that's not true. Because if you're like me and most of the people I teach, you can get lots of information Yet it's not always it's not always correct, and so learning to to get the feeling of when it's correct and not correct is a very important thing. So so yeah, well done though. Good good for you to being able to be connected to the to the field, um, which is which is just awesome. So great great stuff, great stuff. So, hey, thanks for being here, those that were uh, on live and those of you listening to the replay. Those are the, the questions for today. I did have a few more, but I'll save them for next time. I am so grateful for all of you. Now, if you're listening to this in, in any time before uh, May 2021, we are doing a huge book launch and giving away some massive prizes. Who wants to hear about it? It's massive, massive. So my book, You're Not Broken, is launching in May. In fact, it's going to be live on Star Wars Day, May the 4th, which is because May the 4th be with you. Now, for two weeks, the book will be $1.99 under two bucks, $1.99 for the book for the first two weeks. And every person who gets the book will be granted a ticket to a three-day virtual event with me that I've never sold for less than $3,000. So for $1.99, you get my whole book that has everything uh, that you need to live super consciously. Here's the book. And if you get, well, here's the, here's the cover of the book because <laughs> it's all I have right now. Uh, it's all I have is a, a printed out cover of the book because I haven't even got the physical one yet. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Sorry, that is actually the whole book. Like do, do the obvious. <laughs> 
you know, that's it. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a 280 page book. And, uh, uh, yeah, someone said, can you spot me a book? No, no, it's $1.99. That is spotting your book. <laughs> I think I think, uh, I think someone's having a laugh. Good on you. So, so it's $1.99 for the book, and, uh, and it will be available next month. Now, if you want to make sure you get told about the book launch, okay, uh, okay make sure that you click to get more information so that you're on my email list. Make sure you're getting my emails. Because if you don't, if you're not on my email list, you're not going to be told um, about the book. So make sure you find a way to get on my email list. Um, click on that link uh, underneath this video and, and use that link to, to make sure you're getting emails and do it because, yeah, for $2, it, you know, it's going to be huge. And please, people ask me a lot, like, oh, Chris, how, how can I help you? Share this out. There's nothing I want more than to have people get this book for two bucks. There's nothing, there's nothing I want more. Nothing I want more to say, oh, I would like a, a million people to get the book. It's, it's going to be on Amazon. Uh, it's going to be on Amazon. So I would absolutely love, share it as much as you like. Uh, we are going to be doing an event. So people for $2 will get a whole event and uh, three days, I think it's like six hours a day. It's live with me. It's huge. And um, <laughs> yeah, so so just make sure you're getting my emails. A lot of people will unsubscribe or they've put in a, their email that goes to some, some fake account or whatever. So just make sure you're getting them. Um, I'll send an email normally once a week. So if you haven't had an email for me in a week or so, go go put your email back in. Does that make sense, Anne? But yeah, definitely. If you're in the mastermind, you're fine. Cool. So watch out for the email, guys. Big, big news. So that's coming up. And if you if you're listening to this um, after the the uh, the book launch and everything else, sorry we missed you. Sorry we missed you. But the book will be available for you um, at a at a normal price. So love you all so much. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks for tuning into the Chris Duncan show. And of course, stay focused, stay uh, magnetic and create a life you love. Looking forward to, to seeing you all at the course. Bye everybody. Bye, bye, bye. You've got questions and I've got answers.